Hey, this is Warren Redlick. This is a video for my uh, daily life supporters, my Patreon supporters and YouTube channel members. Just kind of a stream of consciousness. I'm out, I decided to go out for a walk, was sitting around the house and realized I needed to get out. And as I'm walking sometimes, I'm thinking, and I'm thinking about their sort of what-if scenarios. So I was having a conversation with some people who were shocked that I was all in on Tesla. They're like, well, you shouldn't have more than 5% of your you know, portfolio in any one company. I'm like, yeah, I'm over 90%. They were just shocked and like, like, like to the point of being upset. And just, you know, my history, I was a, I believed in diversified investing for most of my investing time for, I've been investing for about 30 years, probably the first 20, 25 years. I was pretty devoted to not having more than 5% of my portfolio in any one stock. Uh, the history is that in 2013, I got Amazon. I understood, I saw the growth path and I bought Amazon, but I limited myself because of this concept of uh, not having more than 5%. It was the first time that I didn't significantly rebalance. Amazon grew. I didn't invest enough. This is my, my greatest investing mistake as I didn't invest enough. By the way, I'm walking to the beach. You'll get to see the beach in a minute. Um, but I didn't invest enough in Amazon. The one thing I did right compared to the 5%, you know, diversified strategy is I didn't sell Amazon when it grew, at least not right away. I did sell at one point, but I sold some and bought Tesla stock. So I think that's an okay choice. I, I, I didn't, I didn't sell to uh, rebalance for that purpose. But um, there's a reason that I'm this heavily into Tesla and, and there's a concern that comes up is like, well, what if X happens? You know, what if Elon dies is probably the biggest, most obvious concern. But, you know, it doesn't have to be what if Elon dies. I think if Elon dies, the company, will, it won't grow as fast, but they're already on a path to more than 10x with what they have now. Elon's an accelerator. Maybe with Elon, they 50x and without Elon, they 25x. I, I just, where I see it, where the company is, I don't see... Um, I don't see losing Elon. I, I don't want to lose Elon. And I think Elon's going to make it grow faster and bigger and better and do all, all those things. And I think it's helpful to have that powerful leader who gets it, who's making big decisions. But I think the company would be fine. You know, long term, they would still do extremely well. It would still be the right investment to go all in on. But here's another one. Suppose there's a monster earthquake in Shanghai that destroys the Tesla Giga Shanghai factory. That would be a devastating blow to Tesla in the short term, right? I don't know if devastating is the right word. Actually, I should be careful. That would be a, a significant blow to Tesla in the short term. That would dramatically affect short-term revenue. That would dramatically affect and medium-term revenue. Uh, Shanghai is Tesla's most productive factory. It would be significant consequences in the short term. Long term, I don't think that would have a significant effect on Tesla. 10 years out, Tesla's currently building and, you know, finished, they, they built out Giga Texas and Giga Berlin. They're expanding. Those factories will be probably as productive as Shanghai, if not more so. I think Austin will probably be more productive than Shanghai. Fremont is close. It's not as productive as Shanghai, but it's not that far off. Tesla will build new factories. By 2030, Giga Shanghai would be less than 10% of Tesla's overall revenue. Maybe 5% of Tesla's overall revenue. You know, Tesla's strength is, you know, it is a diversified company. There's so much going on at Tesla. You've got cars, you've got energy, you've got uh, artificial intelligence, you've got this robo taxi thing, which is related to artificial intelligence. Um, there's so many different things. I'd like, here's another what if. What if there was a sudden global shift in preferences? and people stop buying SUVs. And the Model X and also the, but more importantly, the Model Y, Model Y by the way, Model Y I might walk plugged into a wall. Um, <laughs> Tesla's Tesla's everywhere. Suppose all of a sudden global preferences changed and no one bought Model Ys. Tesla's best selling model. Tesla would shift manufacturing, produce more of whatever vehicles people wanted not a huge issue short term big hit big hit to revenue big hit to short-term profits 
but 10 years from now, not a problem. This is, I think, an important detail that people miss about investing and why, you know, it's, it, you have to be cautious. You don't want to go on a, all in on a company that's very limited, that isn't in and itself diversified, that, that faces really, really big risks. Um, but you know, there's the other side of this is just, you have to compare your upside with your downside. The upside with Tesla is so huge that the downside risk ends up being not big enough to make you stay away from the upside. You know, that you're looking at what's the downside risk? Short term, the stock falls 50, 75%. Long term, the chances of Tesla long term not growing are, it, I mean, there's, you don't want to say anything's a zero probability. Nothing is a zero probability. But that's a really, really low probability event. Um, I don't, I can't put a number on it, but I got to say less than 1% probability. And I, and maybe I'm being over optimistic there, but all right, less than 10% probability. But what's the upside? The upside is insanely high. So when you balance, you know, let's say a 90% probability of 50 X or let's say a 90% probability of 10 X, 80% probability of 10 X and a 10% probability of 20 X or more versus a 10% probability of falling more than 50%. The expected value of the is, is so high that you have to go all that, that I have to go all in. This is not financial advice, of course. You got to make your own investment decisions. Uh, I'm really just persuading myself, by the way. We're out here on the beach. Got I gotta look at the bikinis now. I'll, I'll, I'll save them from you, but I'll, I'll watch the girls in the bikinis running by. Beach. Sorry, I'm not zooming in for you guys. I can't help it, I like girls in bikinis. I'm not gonna apologize for it. So uh, anyway, I think, um, oh, and they stopped. I don't know what's going on here, it's a run. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. I, I hope you guys are having a great day. I'll be doing Sunday Live. Uh, probably post this after Sunday Live. I might post this on Monday. Uh, thank you for your support. And I might do a video like this on YouTube later, but uh, with, you know, put it together a little bit more and, and a little, little better, a little more editing. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks again for your support.